This is the 10th and final video in the series of 10 tutorials on how to use Pen Tool in Illustrator CC. In the last video, we learned how to manipulate the stroke and how to use the Width Tool. In this video, we're going to finish up our B character by creating his wings and adding a little dimension with some shadows. Again, I have a link to download the B character below. But if you are teaching graphic design, know that this video goes with the Pen Tool Exercises to Learn Illustrator Tools unit at digitalartteacher.com. Check the info bar at the top for more teaching resources. Build the wings in your preferred method. I'm going to use the click and adjust later method. I do have some very odd ends stuck in here. So with my direct selection tool, I'm gonna click on those spaces and smooth out the curve and then adjust the handles. Once you have finished, right click on the back wing and send it to the back. Select both of your wings and give them a bluish fill. Wings are usually transparent, so we will need to change the opacity of these wings. Before, when we changed the opacity, we came over here to the panels. But you can also come up here to the option bar. If for some reason you don't have the option bar, you can go to Window, Workspace, and Essentials Classic, and it will pop up for you. Change the opacity to 30 or 40%. The last thing I want to show you in this series is how you can easily create a little dimension for your illustrations. You know that if you have the selection tool, then you can select more than one object. But if you have the direct selection tool, you can select one or more points. The points that I have selected are a solid color. The points I do not have selected have white in the middle of them. Since I am wanting to create a shadow effect, I will click on the ones on the lower right side. I hold shift to select any that I have missed. First, I copy this section of the line. Then I want to paste it, but I want it to paste in the exact same place as the old line. So I'm going to paste in place with shift command V. Now that does look funny. So let's remove the fill and double click the stroke color and make it a darker blue. If you would like, you could select this color and copy it, and then come back to the stroke that we created, paste it in there, and then you could change from this color to get a darker color on the same scale. Now get the width tool again and increase the width to whatever seems right to you. 
We don't want the width tool to go out beyond the bounds of our shape. So hold Alt and click and drag on this handle until it meets the stroke line. And voila, a shadow. Since this shape already has a low opacity, we don't need to lower it for the shadow. But if you do this for a solid shape, you will need to lower the opacity when you finish with the width tool. So let's test this out with a body shape. You'll need to ungroup, shift command G. Go ahead and make it so you can't see your drawing. Now, since the black parts are already black, we don't need to give those a shadow. But let's click on one of these yellow parts. Grab your selection tool, click and drag across the bottom, which makes it so you only have this section, and Command C, Shift Command V to paste it. Double click to view the color, copy that color, remove the fill, double click on the stroke, paste that color, and make it darker. Now move to the width tool, and you're going to do both sides. Hold down Alt and pull in the one side and adjust it until it looks right. You'll want to move it so that it is behind the black strokes. You can use this shortcut key so that you don't have to keep coming in here to do that. Move it back until it's behind the leg. And then you can do the same thing with the other stripe. I'm going to move this point in a little. If you click it first, you'll select it and then move it in a little so that it goes inside of the black stripe and then I will command left bracket until it goes behind the leg and the stripe. And then of course select both shapes and lower the opacity. It just gives it a little bit of extra dimension. If you find you need to adjust something later you can always come back with your width tool and adjust it. And doing the same thing with the head and the other wing. When you have finished all of your edits, you may want to select everything and group it so that you don't accidentally move one part. And that concludes this series on getting started with the pen tool. If you would like some resources on teaching this lesson, go to digitalartteacher.com or see the link in the upper right section of the screen. Now maybe you don't feel like an expert, but you should at least feel like you're on your way to becoming a master at the pen tool. Of course. The more you practice, the easier it will be for you. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.